Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm planting up my window boxes here on this side of our house and I've got it kind of laid out how I want it to look. Nothing's planted yet, they're all still in their cans, but I think it's gonna be amazing. So I just wanna go through all of the plants real quick and then we'll actually get them in the window baskets and see how it really looks all kind of intermingled together. So first off, I wanna go through the plants that are gonna be kind of sitting toward the back of the window box. I've got several hookahs here. These are called Wildberry. They're a zone four through nine perennial, actually. Um, I have a spot in my yard picked out that I want to plant, where I want to plant these. So I can use them in the window boxes and then plant them out this fall. And I love to do that because then I don't feel so bad jamming my pot so full of stuff when I get to use them again. Um, so these grow about 10, 14 inches tall, and then they'll space out probably in the landscape about 18 or so inches. And then they throw up these really pretty bloom spikes. So like really pretty dark purple, stem with kind of these creamy pink flowers uh, and you can kind of see them sticking up from all the hookahs there i've got four of these total in between each hookah i'm going to plant a carex called amazon mist now carex like this they can do full sun they can also do a little bit of shade and this area actually gets a pretty strong block of morning sun like first thing it's pretty quick like maybe two hours or so then the rest of the day it's in shade, but I find that Carex like this does pretty well. It won't grow enormous. It'll just kind of sit looking like this all summer long, which is perfectly fine with me because I don't really like to plant my window boxes with super tall things because I like to have the view. Um, but most especially, this grass has amazing mint green color, which looks beautiful. I mean, look at it in between those hookahs. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then lining around kind of the front area here, I've got several ivy. I think there's one, two, three, four, five ivy called duckfoot. And it's got this really neat kind of thickly lobed leaf, leaf instead of being really pointy, like some of your ivies might be. This is also a perennial. Um, so the ivies I don't typically plant in the ground. I just save them over in our cold frame and then I'll plant them in containers next year. Then we've got some surefire rose begonias which we just posted a video recently where we planted a whole bunch of these underneath our Chinese rain tree. And I'm really looking forward to having this be the, really the only flower color in this arrangement. All the rest of it's pretty much foliage. I mean, the hookah has flowers, but they're fairly small. So this will be our big pop of color. And then this might be the one I'm most excited about. This is a uh, coleus called chocolate drop and it's instead of being strictly upright, it will actually trail out of a container. So I've planted, I'm going to put, let's see, I've planned to put four in here so they can kind of just fill in and spill down the front. I love the leaf on this one. Look how interesting that is. And I think that the color on the interior, interior of the leaf will look really pretty with this hookah right here. Um, so that is the lineup of plants. So now I'm gonna take them all out. I'm going to take part of the soil, well, most of the soil out from last year. I still have that in this box. We'll get fresh stuff in, some fertilizer, and then we'll plant. turned out so pretty and it is chock full of plants like when I got to the last round with these chocolate drop sedum I thought oh should I squeeze those in there should I just hold off but I think it's such a beautiful addition and I was so excited about using the plant that I just went ahead and found some room and I'm not really concerned about putting things so close together in a shade container not like I would be with a full sun container when we plant super tunias and purple fountain grass and vertigo penicetum those kind of things need a ton of room to grow but I don't expect really like the hookara and the carex won't put on a whole lot more growth they'll stay pretty much the same size the begonias may push a little growth if they were in more sun they would probably get a little bit bigger um, so i'm really not that concerned i think all of the spillers will put on growth downward which is great you know but we'll see as the season goes i did put fresh soil in 
with um, slow release fertilizer and these will be fertilized on a probably once a week to every 10 day schedule. I don't water these quite as often as I do my sun containers. So I just kind of, I don't do them quite as consistently. With my full sun containers, we water, uh, fertilize every week without fail. Um, so this one's done. Now I've got the second one to go. The second box is planted and I love, love how they look. All of the plants are just so pretty together. And you know, the Surefire Rose Begonia, the pop of pink in here is really pretty, but I honestly think that I would enjoy this arrangement just as much without the bloom color because there's so many different colors and textures in just the leaves that I think it makes it really interesting. And I do think I called this chocolate drop coleus a sedum earlier. I don't know what I was thinking. I might have been thinking lemon coral sedum lemon and chocolate and I don't know, uh, but it's definitely a coleus. Um, but I think that that is such a beautiful touch, um, especially right underneath the hookara. Um, so I did water them in from overhead today just to make sure all their root balls were settled into their new homes. Um, but we do have a drip system set up. Aaron and I set it up earlier on this spring. So there are five half gallon an hour emitters spread evenly throughout this box. So unless I'm fertilizing, I shouldn't have to bring any water up here, which is awesome. These plants are also very low maintenance. The only thing I'll probably do every once in a while is come in and groom off any spent bloom heads. So any of these spikes of blooms that are spent, I'll uh, clip off down here below like the leaf canopy. And then the Surefire Rose Begonia, I shouldn't, I don't need to deadhead. It will keep blooming even if you don't deadhead it. But aesthetically, I like the way it looks when they're all cleaned up. So now I wanna kind of back up and take a look at the rest of the patio area. There's not a whole lot going on for summer yet, except for the window boxes, but it kind of just like inspires me, makes me wanna keep um, adding more pretty things. I have these containers by the door with the boxwood cones that wintered over in here. And then my pansies from earlier this spring, they're still looking really sweet. So I'll probably keep them in here for a little while until I decide what I even wanna put in these pots. I might play around with a little bit more foliage texture and color, like maybe more chocolate drop sedum and some Goldilocks Creeping Jenny, something like that. Um, I'm just not sure yet. And then you can see our drip system right here. So we had to run it from the other side of the house and there's no water source over on this other side. So we had to run it along the ground. So I do still need to order a rug to put right in front of the door so we can kind of tuck in all this tubing and you won't see that anymore. And it'll look a little bit more polished up here. But I think this is a wonderful start for summer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really loved putting these together. We will see you in the next one. Bye.